This week on Maker Update, a mask launcher, Hackaday U, Star Wars Book Nook, Flexbot, Quarter Scale Arcade, DeWalt's Welding Table, and Embossing Comes to Fusion. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update. I hope you're all hanging in there and staying cool. I found a ridiculous amount of great projects this week, so let's get started with my pick for the project of the week. We can't not talk about Alan Pan's latest masterpiece, a pneumatic launcher that shoots face masks at people. Don't try this at home, kids, but do watch Alan's video where he uses himself as his own test subject. Alan's design uses brass tubing and brake line adapters connected up to a CO2 solenoid valve. A spray paint grip acts as a trigger and a laser cut enclosure holds in the LiPo battery and a laser pointer for aiming. Small weights carry the mask like a net and wrap it around the target. Some adhesive tape placed inside the mask helps it stick. It's a wild and impractical and potentially dangerous project, but it sure is fun to watch and I can't say I've ever seen anything like it before. Now for some news, Hackaday has announced six new Hackaday U online courses coming up for fall. Each class is offered on a pay what you wish basis with a minimum donation of $1. They look great, most of them seem approachable for beginners and subjects sound fun like interactive media with lights and sensors or introduction to FPV drones or using Arduino and fast LED. If you're looking for a low stakes way to learn a few new maker skills, definitely check these out. Now for more projects, on Tested, Norm Chan joins Adam Savage back in the cave for a socially distanced look at Norm's new Star Wars inspired book nook project. This is Norm's riff off Jen Schachter's laser cut book nook kit. His version is also laser cut, but also makes use of the Cricut Maker for cutting out styrene shapes to get glued to the laser cut acrylic used on the interior. It's gorgeous and perfectly sized to be able to use regular Star Wars action figures. The video is a bit unique because the first half is the show and tell with Adam, and the second half is a more detailed look with just Norm as he pulls it apart and tells the story of his process. But there's also a second follow-up video that's more of a how-to for building your own version of Norm's design. That video goes through the build step-by-step -step and includes a link to Norm's Thingiverse page where you'll find all the design files. Next up, check out how Carl Bougeha made this small robot made from a single flexible PCB. The really clever part of this design is that the flexible circuit board has coils embedded inside which can be charged to repel magnets glued to the flap that's folded behind it. If you pulse this charge fast enough, the tiny bot will just vibrate forward. The trick then becomes how do you steer it and control it? By using a pair of these coils side by side and adjusting their speed independently, you should be able to change the direction or compensate for it shifting when you're trying to get it to go in a straight line. But I say should because Carl hasn't quite ironed this part out. He's got the Bluetooth control going and a little H-bridge drivers for each coil. He's tried different magnets and different ways to stiffen the hinge. All of this has informed a plan for the next version, but I'm not gonna let that stop me from acknowledging all the awesome work that he's put into the project so far. In the meantime, he has a great video up that documents his process. He's also posted the open source Gerber files for his design over on Hackaday. For another incredible miniature Star Wars inspired project, check out Jamie McShann's one quarter scale functional replica of the Star Wars arcade game. This is a Raspberry Pi based project that uses a Pi 3 Model A Plus running retro Pi game software for the emulation. The cabinet is cut from MDF using plans and decals that are scaled down from the original design. The trickiest part was the custom control yoke. Most of it is made from resin 3D printed parts along with two through hole potentiometers, some tiny switches for triggers, and some rubber bands to get it to center on its own. The other crazy part is the coin acceptor, which not only lights up and looks super realistic, but it can even accept little miniature coins. Check out the full video for more info and stick around to the end of it for more close-up detail on how it's constructed. Now for some tips and tools. DeWalt makes a lot of tools, but they don't really do anything with welding until now. This is DeWalt's first portable welding table. When I heard they were coming out with it and that it was way different than anything else on the market, I jumped at it. I've been needing a better welding table for a while. I've got a full video review of it up on the Cool Tools channel, comparing it against the Harbor Freight table that I've been using up to now. Check it out. On Tested, Adam Savage shows off his two favorite hot glue guns. One is a 3M glue gun that takes these little glue pellets, which you can get in a low temp option, 
for quick prototype work. The other is an adjustable temp glue gun called the Pam Fasten Master, which I also have and have reviewed on Cool Tools a couple years ago. I'll include links to both reviews if you're curious. On Instructables, Design Craft Workshop shows how to seal, paint, and finish the edges of plywood for an even look without using edge banding. The trick comes down to wood filler, sanding, and technique. It also helps to use a nice plywood to start with. Check out the full guide to learn more. On Hackaday, I found this insane 3D printed high torque gearbox from Brian Brocken. The ratio is around 162 to 1 and takes the speed down from 9,000 RPM to 60. In exchange for the drop in speed, you get enough torque to pull a car. There are some really smart design choices here, including double helical gears that are quieter than spur gears and also transfer their force more gradually. You can find the STL files for everything on Thingiverse. Jocko Whatever, the creator of the Maker Knife, has a new tool on Kickstarter called the Kinetic Driver. It's a beautifully machined driver handle that's weighted in such a way that its own momentum helps drive home your screw. I'm not sure if it's going to change my life, but it's beautiful to watch. I also noticed that both the Ruiz Brothers and Maker's Muse put out videos last week covering the new emboss feature added to Fusion 360. It's a feature that's been long overdue, but everyone seems happy with how it's been implemented. If you want to get up to speed on it quickly, I've included links to both their videos in the description. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out this video they did a few years back on how to find replacement electrolytic capacitors. Capacitors come in a crazy amount of variations. If you know the specs for what you need and you know the type of package it needs to be to mount on your board, then it's just a matter of clicking the right fields and drilling down your search until you found something that works. But what often happens is that you don't know the exact specs and all you have is a part number for a product that's now obsolete and unavailable. If you can find that obsolete part on DigiKey, you can check the boxes next to its attributes to look up a replacement part. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to do all the things, the subscribing and the liking and the leaving of the comments that I enjoy reading. You can also get on the Maker Update email list so that you can stay on top of each week's show. A big thanks to my patrons on Patreon and an extra big thanks to DigiKey Electronics for making this whole show possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.